Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. I am so excited today because Lexus is introducing the all new 2023 Lexus RX. And guess what? They are introducing the high performance version of it for the very first time called the Lexus RX 500H F Sport Performance. I know it's a bit mouthful, but as you know, I own a number of Lexus, including my current model, which is a Lexus IS 500. And that one is also the F Sport Performance. So what excitement to be able to have that kind of a performance version in the new RX. So that's the biggest news for the Lexus, but also there are so many interesting things to share with you about the Lexus RX, I don't even know where to start. What I want to do today is something interesting. I have the 2022 Lexus NX right here, and what I'm going to do is show you the differences between the NX and the RX, and at the same time, tell you all the details of what's new in the new Lexus RX. So there's a lot to share with you, so let's get right into it. Welcome back. So once again, I am super, super excited to talk about the new 2023 Lexus RX. But what I also want to explain is that Lexus as a brand is going through a whole new transformation. Koji Sato, who is the president of Lexus International, and Akio Toyota, who is the president of Toyota Global, uh, did a number of videos showcasing their future vision for Lexus as a brand, and also for Toyota, of course. And what they're saying is that Lexus needs to go to a whole new direction with the emphasis on performance, emphasis on fun to drive factor, and focus on making Lexus one of the most intriguing and interesting brand out there. As you can see in this video, Koji Sato and Akio Toyota can be seen laughing and smiling and talking about how the future of Lexus will change. So perhaps the RX will redefine the way it drives because the older Lexus RX was very comfortable, very smooth, but perhaps a bit boring and maybe even a little bit numb. I suspect the new RX, in much the same way the new NX has happened, will become a much more of a transformed vehicle with focus on better handling, better ride, and overall better performance. Now let's get right into the exterior of the uh, Lexus RX and compare it to the NX so that I can tell you what are the, some of the biggest change going from the NX to the RX. So obviously Lexus is going to try to retain a lot of the similar feel across its entire lineup, whether it's the most expensive LX or the cheaper NX like this one. But the RX has some unique design that even surprised me. So it does, for example, still have the spindle design, but in the case of NX, as you know, the spindle design carries over to the upper end here, and then the grille pattern carries all the way through. But in the case of Lexus RX, there is still a spindle grille, but instead of this entire grille coming from the bottom to the top, it actually stops right here, and instead you get kind of a body embossed look. So you kind of get the pattern, but it's embossed into the look of the body, and that's what happens on the upper portion. So in fact, the front part looks more aggressive and actually quite different than the NX. It's got a bit of a like, almost like a, a cat ready to pounce on its prey a lot more visually stimulating and actually quite a departure from what I expected from a Lexus. So the front end is quite different from the uh, actual NX model that I have here. Uh, the front headlight is similar. It's still got the L shape for both the NX and also the RX. But the way the actual headlight looks a little bit different between the NX and RX. And overall, the RX actually looks more aggressive and more modern than NX, even though typically speaking, the NX is supposed to be the sportier version of the SUV. As you move to the side profile, this is where the biggest difference is between the Lexus NX and RX because the RX is actually maintaining its floating design. NX has this kind of a swooping look, which is carrying over the similar idea from the previous NX, uh, but the RX has the floating roof line, which is a signature look and feel of the RX. I think a lot of people like that design, so Lexus decided to keep that for 2023, and this part is blacked out, and as you can see in the images, this part looks like it's kind of floating. It's a pretty unique design to the RX, but it still looks really good. So the side profile otherwise is somewhat similar, but the back end is where things begin to get, get interesting because the new Lexus RX is kind of like a, a cross between this NX 
and the current RX. What I mean by that is that it is finally moving to a full tail lamp design across the board and much like all of other Lexus, uh, it is now spelling out the word Lexus instead of having the logo in the center. In fact, if you look quickly, the Lexus NX and the RX looks kind of similar in terms of the overall design, but that's okay because that's the new signature look and feel for all Lexus, which is the full width tail lamp. And then the new RX, of course, is bigger than the NX. I'll get into more details a little bit later on that. It is obviously wider and bigger in all dimensions, so it does look different from that perspective. Uh, also, the Lexus uh, RX comes in different versions uh, compared to the NX in terms of variations. Again, more details coming up your way. So the rest of the body and the rest of the look and the feel is somewhat similar as all Lexus carry the similar design theme in terms of the wheels, in terms of blackout trims, and so forth. And the interior is also um, somewhat similar. Perhaps I would say the interior is even more similar between the NX and the new RX. Let's get into it and find out. So now I'm inside the Lexus NX and I want to show you that uh, the new Lexus RX actually has a lot of similar design theme as the NX. So for example, the overall look and feel in terms of this kind of flanked out design with the infotainment system here, with engine start stop button on the upper left here, and the full digital cluster are all very similar between NX and RX. And even the steering wheel is virtually identical between the two. And although you don't get this kind of curvy design on the NX carry over to uh, RX, there is some similar design in terms of center console and the overall look of the dash and the door design. You get a bit more fancier design theme coming through on the passenger side uh, dash here. And also at night, there is a really fascinating illumination going on. So it's a beautiful design overall. Um, at the top of the line model for the Lexus RX, you do get the 14 inch um, display, which is going to be large and very easy to use. It uses a faster processor, so very, very quick and responsive to your hands. I think they're still working through some bugs in terms of the actual software, but it is definitely way better than it was before. Also, you get a full digital 12.3 inches cluster, uh, which is a very uh, welcomed feature, much like what you see in the NX. So that's very similar between the NX and the RX. Now the actual RX is wider, so you do get more space inside. Uh, but other than that, the design looks quite similar. The seat design though is quite different because the, um, in the Lexus NX, especially in the EFSA sport versions, you get more of a fancier looking sporty versions. In RX is a little bit more subdued, a little bit more conservative design. But overall, the Lexus RX looks great in inside. Perhaps that's the biggest welcome change for the 2023 versus the 2022. But there are also a lot of interesting things to share with you in terms of the Lexus RX uh, new models, in terms of variations, the powertrain, because for the very first time, it's going to have a hybrid version that uses a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. This is the very first time in Toyota or Lexus history where they have decided to bring together hybrid mechanism with that new 2.4 liter turbo four. That has never happened before. And that combination is going to be in the new Lexus RX 500H uh, together with a direct four technology. So that's really exciting. Now let me talk about the dimension between the NX and RX, and I'm going to get into more details about the powertrain. So in terms of dimension of the new Lexus RX compared to NX, well, let me get my cheat sheet out here so I get all the numbers correctly. Uh, it's pretty interesting because the, the new uh, Lexus RX is actually 192.5 inches long, basically same as the current model, compared to 183.5 inches for this NX here. So it is nine inches longer, which is pretty substantial, um, but it has also 2.36 inches shorter overhang. And that is because the wheelbase it's much longer in the new RX. The wheelbase in the NX is 105.9 inches. Uh, the wheelbase in the new RX is 112.2 inches, which is 6.3 inches longer when you compare the RX to the NX. But what's interesting is that 2023 Lexus RX has a 2.36 inches longer wheelbase than before which will give you a better legroom in the rear and just overall better packaging. So that's why they're moving to a longer wheelbase. 
In terms of width, the NX is 73.4 inches wide, RX is 75.6, so it's 2.2 inches wider. And then in terms of the height, the NX is 65.8 and RX is 66.7, so almost the same height, just about an inch taller than the NX. Otherwise, we don't have the final dimensions for things like uh, interior spacing and cargo capacity, so I can't give you the full details on that yet. But I suspect the RX will have quite a bit more legroom in the back and obviously more shoulder room and perhaps a little bit more headroom because it's also taller. Uh, it should also have much larger cargo capacity. So those are some really interesting things going on with the new uh, Lexus RX. One of the most interesting thing is the fact that Lexus RX has new models. So I have the cheat sheet right here. Let me go through that right now. The NX, which is the one that I have right here, comes in 250, 350, 350H, 450H Plus, which is a plug-in hybrid models. But the RX will now come in 350, 350H, 450H Plus, which is a plug-in hybrid, and then the new 500H F Sport Performance. That's the most exciting models to date. So it will not have the 250 version for Lexus RX, which is expected. Now the plug-in hybrid, which is the 450H Plus, uh, is yet to be introduced properly, so more details on that later on. But let me talk about the other models in terms of engine lineup. The base model is a Lexus RX 350, which can come in both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive in the US, but only comes in all-wheel drive in Canada. That has a 2.4-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, which is identical to the one that's also used in the Lexus NX. Next up is the 350H, which is the hybrid, and that's a standard hybrid version. Now, that one uses the exact same hybrid system that's used in the Lexus NX, and also used in Toyota RAV4 and Highlander, which uses the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine to the traditional hybrid mechanism. So that's something that we already have in Toyota and Lexus lineup, so there's no surprise there. Next is the Lexus RX 450H Plus, which is a plug-in hybrid that uses the exact same plug-in hybrid system as the NX plug-in hybrid, which is also same as the one that's used in the RAV4 Prime, which is a car I own as well. So that plug-in hybrid version, which is also in the NX, has about sort of 35 to 40 miles of range. So I expect something similar in the new RX as well. But the top of line model, which is the new model that was not uh, seen before, is the Lexus RX 500H. It's called the 500H F Sport Performance to be super official. And that one is going to be using the 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine together with the new hybrid mechanism. But unlike the other hybrids, it is a different system because it is using the direct four system. Direct four system means that it uses the 2.4 liter turbocharged engine in the front of the car, but it has a motor in the back through the usage of what we call e-axle system. So now the system can control the wheels in terms of power and torque much more accurately, and it is just a more efficient and much more advanced version of the hybrid system. So that combination is all new, something that we have been speculating for a while. And the reason why that is so important is because that 2.4 liter turbocharged engine hybrid mechanism is expected to be shown in other Lexus and Toyota models in the future, including possibly the Toyota Tacoma and maybe even the Toyota 4Runner. So the fact that we finally have a confirmation that Toyota and Lexus have this new powertrain is a very significant news indeed. The RX 500H uses six piston brakes and also has 21 inch wheels and kind of a sportier all around design, both exterior and interior. So it is definitely the most exciting RX and I can't wait to see it, I can't wait to drive it. And that would be my go-to car if I were to buy a mid-size SUV from a Lexus. So let me begin to summarize more details for Lexus RX. It is all new for 2023 and the models will begin to show up sometime end of this year and it is going to be based on the new TNGA K platform and it's almost 200 pound lighter thanks to extensive use of aluminum. It also has improved and revised suspension in the form of a multi-link suspension so it should handle a lot better and it should be more fun to drive because that's something that Koji Sato, the president of Lexus, is promising with the introduction of every new Lexus model. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. So what else can I tell you? Well, it will also have Lexus Safety System Plus 3.0, which is identical to the one that's in the Lexus NX, 
except the RX will also have a new advanced parking feature, which is not offered in NX. So that'll be quite interesting where you can get the system to park the car for you. But in terms of the Lexus Safety Plus 3.0, it has all these different features, risk avoidance, emergency, steer assist, left turn detection and braking, pedestrian detection when turning left or right, obviously adaptive cruise control, pre-collision system, those are expected, and uh, steering assist that goes with a lane departure. So those are all of the new features you get in the Lexus Safety System Plus 3.0, and that is standard on the new Lexus RX. Now I expect the Lexus RX to be very popular because it is the most popular model in the Lexus lineup, and there is already a waiting list on the RX. So if you're interested, I urge you to go to your Lexus dealership and maybe put a deposit because you might not get it for a while. I have a deposit on the new RX as well, so who knows when I will get that, maybe in six months or years time, but I look forward to maybe getting the 500H. Now keep in mind that the Lexus RX is built in the Cambridge factory in Ontario, Canada, but Lexus RX is also built in Miata factory in Kyushu, Japan, which is a very south of the Japan. So perhaps what's gonna happen in the beginning is that uh, some of the RX will be built in Ontario, and perhaps the 500H, which is, um, which is a new model along with a plug-in hybrid, maybe they'll be built in Japan first and brought over to uh, North America for sale, and eventually they'll be manufactured in the Cambridge factory as well. That's typically what Lexus does, is to produce the most complex one in Japan first to get uh, all of the production bugs out of the system, and when the, they are comfortable with bringing it to North American market in terms of the factory base, then they'll bring it back to the Cambridge, Ontario factory. So those are some interesting facts about the Lexus RX. Are you excited as much as I am? There's so much more coming your way in terms of Lexus information and Toyota information, so please stay tuned. If you can give me a thumbs up, make some comments and subscribe, I would really appreciate it because there's so much more I want to share with you in the future. For now, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you then.